Hello and welcome back and today we're going to talk about the best NAS for editing video in 2018. Okay, let's get straight into it. Network attached storage is pretty cool at the moment. A number of you out there that edit videos professionally or personally at 1080p or 4K are looking for the right NAS for you to edit those files remotely. And it is a lot harder than it seems. You can't just have a NAS on your network and edit those files over the network. There's too many things that limit it. The size of your files, the busyness of your network, the bandwidth, that sort of thing. And in order to edit video in the most efficient way and the most effective way as as well as improving your entire workflow, you need to make sure you buy the right network attached storage drive, hence this, hence this video. I want to talk about my top three NATs to buy at the end of 2018, but first and foremost, it is worth mentioning that firstly, these are all rack, um, desktop NASs. We're not looking at rack mount NASs because those are super enterprise and of course they're crazy powerful, but they're also crazy expensive. Second point, all of the NAS that we're going to talk about today either feature 10 GBE or Thunderbolt connectivity. Standard 1 GBE connectivity is not enough to edit real video files efficiently. So that is the only things we're talking about today. Lastly, all the NASs we're going to talk about today may have been released outside of 2018. Some of them have, some of them haven't. This isn't about picking the best NAS that was released this year. It is about picking the best NAS to buy right now at the end of 2018 for photo video and um, for photo and video editing of 4K and 1080p video. So do bear that in mind and don't immediately think, oh, I'm not buying that. It's nine months or it's over a year old. That's not the point. It's about the best right now. And there's a good chance that these are better than a lot of the new things that were released in the last few months. So. <clears throat> Let's get straight into it. To buy the right um, video editing NAS, you should consider the following factors. One, you have to make sure it arrives with a good CPU to handle those files. I do recommend uh, an x86 64-bit architecture chip, ideally an Intel or an AMD. Two, make sure that you have got media-assisted internal operations. And what that means is not relying on just one media. You want the ability to have SSDs or SSD caching or a bit, the ability to basically speed up internal operations and improve them and tinker with them as better fitting to your setup. Because even if you're using third party apps like um, Photoshop, uh, DaVinci, Final Cut, that sort of thing, these apps need to have files in a certain way and things like NLE that we'll talk about in a bit need to be available as well as improving internal operations with tiered storage and caching of uh, your data. Next, fast external connectivity. Again, this is what comes down to Thunderbolt NAS, which used to be unheard of and is now relatively common from companies like QNAP, as well as 10 gigabit ethernet connectivity to edit files at 10 times the usual network speed, thereby alleviating lag. And that combined with much more fast and efficient internal operations removes all bottlenecks. All three of the NASs we can talk about today feature that kind of stuff. Next, NLE, non-linear editing, gives you the ability to edit files remotely on the NAS without editing the original file. And that's very important that you don't want to screw with the archive of your data. You want to make sure that data lives somewhere on your NAS and what you're editing is a copy of that. Make sure NLE is supported. You have to make sure that you've got a good support of RAID and RAID backups and maybe even cloud storage options. All of the NASs we're talking about today have got a great option a great selection of options, firstly in RAID, so creating different RAID configurations to package your data together in a way where it's protected from if one of your drives fails. Secondly, they arrive with the ability to duplicate your data and back up your data onto USB keys, cloud-based storage, and other NASs. So it's the ability to um, not only put all your eggs in one basket with a NAS, but have a smart way for that NAS to be backing up data via USB, via the internet, or onto a third-party cloud platform. Next, you have to make sure you've got the ability to create a great selection of users, because it isn't just you in most business capacities that are gonna be accessing the NAS. You're gonna have editors, you're gonna have simple you know, customer service type bots, people that are gonna package metadata on your finished product, people that are gonna distribute your product, and indeed, your customers and clients. You might host your multimedia, like a video on demand service, or if you're a wedding photographer, for example, they want to create selections, albums, and folders that they can create guest accounts for to download those files. So do bear that in mind. And again, 
All three of the NASs we're talking about today have a great UAC user account control system built into place. And that's it really, apart from fast and fluid access to your network and the internet, which most NASs will give you, that's what important, that is what it's important about the perfect video editing NAS for you. So let's get started and get straight into number one. Okay, so in first place, it is the TVS 1282 T3. Now, QNAP NAS has you know, done a really good job, and in fact, NAS storage in general, supporting video editors and content creators alike, has really grown this year. But there's still no denying that for me, this NAS is still the best NAS for video editing, even now at the end of 2018, when this device is over a year old. The reason for that is, it is just a powerhouse of ability, both in terms of storage and in terms of editing on the fly. Just what you've got and the speed of access to it and all the functions available to you, not just in the field of photo and video editing, but outside of that, are extraordinary. Now, all of the products we're going to talk about in our top three will have an enormous pile of specs there, but to summarise across them, eight bays of storage for your hard drives, four SSD bays for either caching or a nice raided area of fast data, internal M2 SSD bays which can be dedicated to caching as well for a tiered storage across three levels where data automatically by the system being handed around to the right storage media for your needs, it's clever enough to do that. On top of that, four Thunderbolt 3 ports, each of which have a theoretical top um, access of 40 gigabits per second and can be connected to four different Mac or Windows devices at once, thereby alleviating all the network connections for your network. Each of those users having Thunderbolt access to the NAS at exactly the same time. On top of that, two 10 GBE ports as well. So the access for this device to your network is phenomenal. And again, for your connected users, for people that want to do further editing or uploading raw material to the database for the editors to work on, you've got that option. An internal um, uh, i7 or i5 based CPU of sixth generation and in some cases seventh gen if you've got one of the newer serial number devices. Again, that CPU is insanely um, powerful, great floating point, hyper-threading enabled and has even got uh, embedded graphics on that CPU for transcoding and reformatting and rendering of files. This thing is a monster. Um, it's got a 4K HDMI port on the rear with support of monitors and keyboard and mouse as well as uh, multimedia concerns of Plex and stuff like that with that transcoding engine built into that CPU. It is a monstrous NAS that completely reinvents the workflow of a video editor. And again, I know it's expensive. Starting the full spec version with all the memory and all the RAM and the latest CPU is about three and a half grand. But you can pick up this device for somewhere at 2,500, 2,800 without the VAT and the hard drive media. If you downscale to the non Thunderbolt, downscale to the i5, you can even get it as low as two grand if you downscale some of those options. Different versions have got Thunderbolt or got 10 GB or got an i5, i7 CPU and really lets you scale what you want to buy that's important to your creative workflow as a content creator. On top of that, with the device, you can get smaller versions, a four bay version, a six bay version, and of course these eight bay versions, each of which scale accordingly to the port connections and CPU you want. I'm focusing on this one just because it is a sheer powerhouse of connectivity and ability to a content creator. Do check out the NAS Compare article in the description, by the way, where I've shown you how a NAS can reinvent your workflow, but moreover, why this device is so damn suitable for that, and why it is still, even a year on, my pick for the best NAS for a video editor that wants to work with 1080p or 4K in 2018. In second place, you've heard of QNAP, what about a Synology? Good question. And again, another NAS that's over a year old, over 18 months old in fact, the Synology DS3617XS. This thing's a killer. I love this device. I've talked about it before. It has won multiple awards for multiple things in the past. But it isn't just about hardware. Synology is a company that seems to really work into software. And then, because they do so well on the software, they're able to eke a lot more out of the hardware. Consequently, they have a tendency to put less of an emphasis on their hardware than they do their software on a NAS. The 3617XS was a great example of Synology not only investing heavily on software, but on hardware too. With a quad-core Xeon-based CPU, 
and um, a PCIe upgrade slot that lets you add 10 GBE if you want it, this thing is something to consider. It's got four LAN ports on it, which means that these LAN ports can be link aggregated to give you up to 4 GBE at any given point. But moreover, if you add 10 GBE to this device and utilize one of the 12 available hard drive bays for SSDs, you've got SSD caching taken care of, you've got 10 gigabit ethernet, you've got that great selection of caching and separate storage areas for your data. And if you're a video editor, there and particularly you Mac users, you must have vibed more with the Synology brand. It's what I keep seeing that a lot of you video and photo editors really vibe with Synology's company and outlook. And moreover, the Synology NASs that we've seen, none of them, even you know, 18 months after this unit's release, have ever shown this level of commitment to the hardware. And once you've got all of those software options with the DSM software, such as uh, Synology Moment, Synology Drive, and all of the applications that are available to you in DSM 6.2, this is still one of the most badass Synology NASs out there, and it's definitely worth its place in my top three video editing NAS for 2018. It doesn't have 10 GBE by default, it doesn't have Thunderbolt by default, and I know I said at the top of the video that all of them do, but you would definitely invest in 10 GBE with this as a video editor, and you've only got to pay an extra 100 quid or so to put in the Synology official card. Again, it can be expanded up to 36 hard drives, huge amount of storage potential built into it. Five years of warranty, which is an enormous number for a piece of hardware, backed up as well with an advanced replacement next day service called SRS, Synology Replacement Service. That combined with being able to create multiple storage pools across those 12 bays, which can then be utilized by different users in your environment, or connecting multiple 10 GBE ports, two port cards, as well as utilizing those LAN ports to separate the data across your network with your admin there, with the metadata creators and the distributors, means that this NAS as a video editing NAS is the perfect desktop Synology and definitely earns its place in my top three. One thing that lets it down really is just that price, 1,900 pounds. Although it's great for a Synology, Given that it doesn't have a lot of those ports and connections, it does let it down the tiniest bit, but still no denying that if you want a Synology NAS as a video editing device and don't want to go rack mount, this is it. This is as good as it gets. And in third place, probably the NAS I've looked forward to talking about the most. I know it didn't make it into first place, and there are reasons for that, but there's still no denying that, as you can tell from the obscene amount of text on screen, this NAS arrives with so much going on. But what's really interesting is it's a compact NAS. The TVS882 SD3, I haven't got it physically in front of me, but I did feature it on the other YouTube channel, is only about this big. It's quite small. It's an SSD specialized NAS. It can house eight SSD hard drive, um, SSDs inside, or 2.5 inch hard drives if you like, and you can put a mixture of two and a half inch hard drives and SSD inside to create that wonderful tiered storage platform. But what's really interesting is this has, in most regards, almost identical hardware to that first NAS we talked about, the TVS 1282T3. It has got an i5 or an i7 quad core CPU option available, and that's a sixth gen CPU. It's got multiple Thunderbolt 3 ports and multiple 10 GBE ports. It's got the USB, it's got HDMI 2.0, it's got the remote control, it's got everything. It's even got um, the support of the, uh, the same PCIe upgrade slots available as the TVS 1282T3, although I don't think you're going to get many GPU cards that are going to fit in this device. It is basically the, exactly the same as that first device, but it is designed for users out there that want to be able to utilize SSD media only, because it's still insanely fast, remove any bottleneck internally, externally, but most important of all, have a compact, neat, and quieter setup of editing. Because if you're gonna be in close proximity to this device, and if you're using Thunderbolt 3, you're only gonna be about two or three meters away maximum because of the length of those cables, then you're gonna want a NAS that doesn't make much noise, and this is that NAS. Not only has it got a low power consumption, thanks to the fact that it's a much more compact device, which featuring HDMI um, uh, SSD bays. But on top of that, because of the compact chassis and the way it's designed with a combination of metal and plastic, as opposed to metal only, which vibrate, this is a much lower noise, lower power consumption NAS, which still has the insane throughput internally and externally 
for your video editing setup. Plus, it retails for a noticeable point less. Even the max spec version only retails for about 2200 more than a grand less than the same specs in that 1282T3 if you went for the i7 or the i5 with all of those ports. And again, because it's SSD optimized for those bays, it is far more contained and better controlling of temperatures. And um, if you do go for a mixture of hard drive and SSD, it also opens up the door for creating those creative workflows where you've got one storage pool of hard drives, those two and a half inch ones, and a bigger storage pool of SSD. And therefore, just send completed projects over there to the hard drives. But then you can prioritize the SSDs rather than in the case of the first device, which prioritized hard drive with eight over SSD where there were four bays. So again, that great selection and setup of this is why this device is easily one of my favourites out there for photo video editors out there, particularly ones that want to consider 10GB and Thunderbolt connectivity. Again, if you don't want to, this device is available to TVS882 without Thunderbolt and without 10GB connectivity. And then you can add things as you go and it will save you a big old chunk of money. But those have been my top three natties for video editing here at the end of 2018. If you disagree with me or maybe something I missed, let me know in the comments. Do buy your NAS from the guys at span.com, NAS experts, nearly 25 years experience in the biz. Also, if you've enjoyed this, click like and subscribe and help me out for future videos, and I'll see you next time.